The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Rogers TV. I'm Dave Carr. I'm sitting in for David Sherman, who is away. I think David Sherman's back on October the 28th, if I'm not mistaken. But David Sherman is away for several weeks, and uh, I'm merely filling in. Tonight on Politically Speaking, this is the first of several of these events related to the upcoming municipal elections in Ontario, particularly in our Rogers TV viewing area. Tonight is going to be a mayoralty candidate debate for the municipality of Meaford. Coming up, we are going to have uh, debates for Owen Sound and Georgian Bluffs. We are going to have a voter information session with clerks from the three municipalities and as we get close to the election, I think we're slated to have a media panel in here to discuss the issues in the various municipalities and talk about the campaign, talk about voting, and all of that. So that's what's happening over the next several weeks. Tonight, the candidates for the municipality of Meaford in uh, alphabetical order, they are Ross Kentner and Paul Vickers. Both of them are first-time councillors seeking the office of mayor. Full disclosure for the purpose of tonight's program, I worked for Mr. Kentner for 30 years. The upside to this is that I am not a voter in the municipality of Meaford, um, for which Mr. Vickers may thank me, having <laughs> heard that information. <laughs> uh, but you all should know that as we go through this this evening. It's going to be very conversational. Um, situation tonight. My questions will be directed pretty much at both of them. They may agree on things, they may disagree on things, they can talk to each other. It'll be a very conversational rather than the, these more stiff timed and I'll just try to make sure that everybody gets fair balance. We, uh, the format will be opening statements, conversation, closing statements. Uh, we drew names at the just before the show came on the air and Mr. Kentner's name was drawn to go first Mr. Vickers will follow at the end of the program it will be in the same order Mr. Kentner and then Mr. Vickers um, so Mr. Kentner gets the first word in balance Mr. Vickers gets the last word pure balance if you gentlemen are ready to begin Mr. Kentner in particular since your name came up first by the way Thank you both for running for mayor, and thank you for coming in and doing this on Rogers TV. Mr. Kentner, you get the uh, opening statement. Thank you, and thank you to you, Dave, and thank you uh, to Rogers Cable for, uh, for greasing the wheels of democracy. Much appreciated. So, uh, in a nutshell, I, I have said this election is fundamentally about vision and leadership. And the reason I say that is because the future is really already here. Uh, we're seeing that uh, on all sides. Last year, over $100 million in building permits in the municipality of Meaford. We're on fire, really. Um, so vision and leadership are needed to just avoid falling into the pitfalls that I think uh, we have seen Collingwood and Town of Blue Mountains uh, enter. Um, for, for six decades, we have seen the march of the GTA from, uh, from the shores of Lake Ontario all the way to Georgian Bay, and, and it is here now. And, and so uh, it is Meaford's turn, and, uh, but it's also our turn, I hope, not to make some of the mistakes that other municipalities have had uh, with a lot of development pressure. Once you cut off your shoreline, you limit the desirability of the community, uh, both as a place to live and as a place to visit. So what would I do? Uh, first thing I would do, uh, I'm very passionate about this, empower council to set the agenda. Um, I think that we have to make our CAO's accountabilities match our priorities. 
um, I want to resource our advisory committees and especially our economic development committee. Uh, it can only meet eight times a year. It has a zero budget. How much development do you think we're going to get? 30 seconds. Um, I would like to look at an agricultural advisory committee. Um, and I'd like to launch a public visioning process because without a vision uh, and a plan, we're not going to be able to uh, accept all the development that is coming and do it well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kentner. Um, our next uh, speaker um, is uh, candidate for mayor, Paul Vickers. Mr. Vickers, thank you for doing this, and it's your turn. Tim, thanks, Dave, and, and I too like to uh, thank yourself and, and Rogers uh, for taking the time to take the interest in, uh, in municipal politics. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a time that we've never seen so much interest in the municipality of Meaford as what we've got right now. We've got two of us running for mayor and 12 people running for, for five spots on council. I'd just like to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I've lived in the area all my life. I, I've, I've farmed at the, at the corner of Seven and, and Frogs Hollow Side Road where my parents uh, were the first generation, I'm the second generation. And during that time, my parents taught me a lot about what's, what's, uh, what's about living. And, and they taught me about honesty and they taught me about hard work and being frugal with your money and not being wasteful. So these are some of the things that I feel I can, I can bring. Uh, during my, my time uh, growing up and in and, and my adult life, I've had some great opportunities and one of them was to, uh, to be part of the board of directors of Gailey Foods Cooperative. Uh, it was a, it's a great cooperative, it's a, it's a growing cooperative. They always they make uh, butter and cottage cheese and uh, I was also the, was fortunate to be the chair for two of those years. And I think having that, uh, that experience on the board uh, will help me. Uh, if elected, to become the mayor and, and fill the responsibilities. It's important to run a well and efficient uh, meeting. Uh, the first place that, that things can start slowing down at the, uh, in the municipality or with government is at the top. And if you aren't prepared to run an efficient, well-ran meeting, then that's going to start slowing things down. There's, there's many great things uh, that are going on in, in the municipality. Uh, between development, uh, uh, you know, we, we've never seen so much development uh, as what we had in the last uh, the last four years. Our biggest problem is is getting shovels in the ground. So, with that said, I look forward to uh, debating and uh, and talking about what's important for uh, the municipality of Meaford. So, thanks, Dave. Thank you very much. Ross Kentner and Paul Vickers, candidates for the mayor of Meaford, with us this evening on Politically Speaking. Mr. Vickers, I'm going to start with you, but all of these things tonight are, are, are for both of you. At the time of your announcement, and this, this follows on actually things that both of you have said, but you said specifically, people have discovered this part of the world. That was at least in the story I read yep. about your candidacy. I'd like to ask each of you, and I'll start with you, will that be a blessing or a curse during the next four-year term, during the term that one of you is the mayor of Meaver? And specifically, your direction to ensure that that sentence is not a curse for the town of Meaford, for the municipality of Meaford. Yep. Thanks, thanks, Dave, for the question. And, and it could be a blessing or a curse, but I want to make sure it is a blessing. And with, uh, with a good, strong mayor and a council table at the top, we can make sure that things are done properly. One of the best things that we can do to make sure that it's, it's done properly is, is have the best possible staff in the municipality. Uh, we, we've got an excellent staff right now with our CEO and, uh, and to kind of go a little bit further, our, our, our planning department is top notch. And they're the ones that really make sure that development is done right. And if you listen to our planning department right now, you'll realize that they do have the right ideas and they do have the, the best interests at, uh, for our municipality. Mr. Kentner. You know, I, I don't disagree with anything you say, Paul. Um, I think that uh, we, we are going to do well, uh, but we, we do need to be careful. Uh, we have a couple of polarizing issues in Meaford right now. Uh, one is uh, TCE's pump storage, and the other is the skydev development, which people are concerned about the density and the mass uh, and, and the height of, uh, of the buildings proposed there. So um, I, I think that uh, we just need uh, to be, have that the agenda has to come from council. I, I feel that at this point in time, 
uh, the agenda is set by the mayor and by uh, staff. And we really do not know what is coming down the pike. Uh, I think I really want to change that. I want there to be uh, an opportunity for all members of council to sit with our CAO and, uh, and uh, uh, our, our main staff people and, and to understand what, what the, uh, like to contribute to the agenda and to all be on the same page about what we're doing. And I, I feel that that more than anything is lacking and uh, that is what I would like to try to improve. Um, in all of this, I'm going to stay with you, Ross. Um, and, um, I now already can't remember which one of you specifically <laughs> mentioned it. I think you did. Pressures from places like the town of the Blue Mountains and Collingwood to your east. Um, the municipality of Meaford has also had issues from time to time with the municipality to your west, uh, uh, Owen Sound. But uh, when I was writing my questions, in, in my mind, I really focused on the pressures from the east. I think you're the one that mentioned it in your opening statements. Um, when you talk about the things that you want to guard against, both of you, um, it, it seems to me that the pressure, and, and I think they're societal pressures, they are lifestyle pressures, they are... Um, um, valuation, expense, um, um, status uh, 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 pressures. I think more of them come from the east than from the west. I think they. I think. I think it's town of Blue Mountains and Collingwood, not them specifically, but what's happening in those communities that's coming your way. So, so let me just say this: the one thing we don't need is million-dollar condos in Meaford. We just don't need them. We, we need apartment buildings you know for uh, young single mothers for example you know uh, with with children uh, or older folks who uh, who need need uh, to downsize they need an elevator but uh, and we also need all kinds of uh, of housing like a wide mixed variety of housing but uh, the million dollar condos that's what everybody wants to present us with and they also want to go higher than we think is really appropriate for Meaford which has tremendous 19th century charm, beautiful architecture, uh, largely brickwork, and uh, when, when people propose buildings that dwarf your town hall or, or your fire hall in, in, the, in the core of, of downtown Meaford, that's a concern, and, and I, I just haven't seen enough uh, control by, by council. I think uh, council in general you know, knows what it wants, but there is no plan really to go by, and for four years, we have danced all around uh, a vision uh, of, of Meaford, what we want the municipality to be, but really there's, there's been no progress on that. And I think we have to establish what we want, and then I, I think that it, the direction has to come from council. I'm going to follow up on some of that. Yeah, um, the, the same thing. It seems to me that the biggest pressures on the municipality of Meaford come from the east, rather from the, I think your I think your pressures from the west are more business pressures. I think I think your lifestyle pressures. Yes. Uh, this is my observation as, as somebody looking at the entire region. Seems to me they come from the east. Yeah. No, and uh, and I would agree with you, Dave. Uh, uh, there is pressure coming from the from the east on on lifestyle. But uh, you know, as what Ross has just said, you know, we don't want million dollar condos. Well, unfortunately, I think we do need a certain amount of those million dollar condos because they're the ones that help fund the tax levy. So not only do we need apartments for single uh, people and, uh, and families and, and people starting that want to actually move out of their parents' house. You know, we need a, we need a combination of both. To, to say that we don't want million dollar condos, I, I don't think that's a, that's a fair statement, Ross. Uh, you know, that's what helps base our levy. It, we have a lot of needs and wants. And we, we have needs that we have to meet every single day, and we have wants that people actually want. So, you know, the levy on those million dollar condos that you say we don't want is what will actually help, not subsidize, but help pay for the services that the apartment buildings will use. And uh, I, I think you're off track there, Ross, because... Are, are you counting on, on uh, development fees to, to help us? No, I'm, I'm talking about tax levy. You know, with a, with a million dollar condo, you have... Uh, a high tax levy. Those people will pay a good chunk of uh, taxes into the municipal coffers and we need that. We need that because we need new fire trucks. We need that because we need to help uh, help share 
uh, the payments of the of the staff wages and, and fuel and everything else that inflation has uh, has gone, has uh, has hit us with in the last couple of years. You know, to 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 say that you know we just want to increase taxes to help pay for all those services that we all want. I, I don't think it's right. I know I don't think we should just have one kind of, of building or another, but I think we need a combination. So, if I can just keep going yeah, on. Yeah. Uh, you know, people talk about, uh, you know, we need a better market square. We need uh, a multi-use recreational facility. How are we going to pay for that, Ross? We only have a $15.7 million levy right now. We need some of those high-end taxpayers to help fund the, the projects that we all can enjoy. Response. Yeah, well, uh, so uh, it doesn't concern you when we have, uh, right now, uh, a lot of our service businesses uh, can't get staff. And part of the reason they can't get staff is there's no housing for them. So you would rather have people come in, uh, retired people come in and buy a million dollar condo no, and send the, send the kids off to uh, no. Guelph or, or, or Kitchener, you know, for a job. No, I, I don't think I said that, Ross. What I said, you have to have housing. And this is the housing that's presented to us at this time and mo moment. So how can we say yes or no, okay, you have, a, you have, an, a, you have a, a development you want to bring to the municipality. Oh, no, we don't want it just now. We want the other development. Let's just start getting development. Last year, the municipality put out 79 building permits. 79 new residents were, were, uh, were built in the whole municipality of Meaford. We, we talk about this, uh, this building boom, this influx of people that are going to come and overwhelm us. I just like to see it start because we've never have, we haven't got a shovel in the ground. The only development that has started is the Loon, uh, Loon development. I've sat through a pile of development or planning meetings over the last four years, and there's only one shovel in the ground. And fortunately, fortunately, Ross, very fortunate, they, they, they are some of the uh, ones that are maybe uh, directed to people with uh, with a lower price point. And understand, understand. Last that, word on this, and then keep, keep, go ahead, and, and then we're going to move on related to this, but go ahead. Well, if it hadn't been for Imagine Meaford, which is actually a group of uh, rather, I think, well-heeled uh, and, and uh, older residents of Meaford who are, are concerned that, you know, they don't want to see uh, our community uh, looking like anywhere Ontario, anywhere Ontario. They, they want to avoid that. They so, want to keep can, Meaford can looking like. They want to keep Meaford looking like Meaford. Just, but just the point, more, the point is, these yeah. people negotiated with the developer of Loon Call and were able to uh, get improvements to that, like less density, more green space, and uh, other visual improvements to Loon Call. And they're still offer, going to be offering houses at, uh, I believe it is, uh, two ninety nine and three ninety nine. And so we're very, very fortunate to have this developer uh, with us in Meaford. And, you know, I just, uh, what I'm saying is, uh, I don't believe that, that uh, we're in any danger of not growing at all. It's going to come and it's going to come fast, but I think we have to be in a position, uh, like we are in a position, to call the shots and be, be a little tougher with developers and actually negotiate what we want. Let, let me ask a couple of questions related to this. One of the things you said um, in your opening statement was, you need to run meetings more efficiently. Uh, you, you, you talk specifically about the council meetings. You have just alluded to the fact that council itself, not necessarily the mayor, should be having more say in both of these. Um, tell me what you were thinking when you said that, and I want you to relate to that as well, because um, one of one of the questions burning in my head is is what is your role either as mayor or what is council's role with developers who come and present you with a plan whether it's a plan for a stack of affordable housing or whether it's a plan for million dollar can uh, condos what is your role with this but let me go back to council uh, you want better council meetings you think council should have more say talk to me about that so. Yeah, I would like to just uh, recommend that everybody read a book called The Mayor, uh, written by George Cuff. He's a very, very uh, well-known and uh, responsible um, um, author on municipal affairs throughout Canada. And his suggestion, uh, and this was the key takeaway for me, was that um, the, mayor, the mayor should, on a regular rotating basis, bring every member of council into his meeting with the CAO, his or her meeting with the CAO. 
And that would give every member of council an opportunity to have input to the agenda and to understand what is in the agenda. We're getting agendas three, four, five hundred pages in length. We have no idea until that agenda hits our, our, our uh, computer at five o'clock on Tuesday afternoon what we're going to be talking about the following Monday. We should be setting the agenda. It should not be staff setting the agenda. Paul Vickers. Yep. So where, what I was getting at with yep. uh, with my experience on Gay Lee Foods, being yep. the chair of the board, is that you know you can't have such a rigid mind that you have to have all your talking notes made ahead of time. You know, being the mayor, you have to have be able to uh, you know make decisions on the go, decide when uh, when conversation is is enough, when it needs to be called. You can't have you know everything that's going to just work bang 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 you have to have the ability to be able to run with it a little bit and uh, I agree with Ross you know do we have enough uh, enough uh, you know warning of what's going to happen in the council meeting you know I there's nothing that's ever really surprised me there's a certain amount of, of, of uh, items that have to make the agenda it's not like we can decide as council okay let's talk about this today let's talk about this we have a certain responsibility to the people of Meaford and to the people that uh, that need us to pass bylaws and motions to make sure that we get our job done you were both you were both municipal councillors for the last four years um, do you do you feel one of I get the sense, Ross, that you didn't have enough input as a municipal councillor. Did you have enough input as a municipal councillor? You know, I don't know what further I could have uh, could have brought to the table. Like, I, d I don't know what all the different items that are that are needed to make sure that our municipality keeps going on. Okay. I don't I don't have the magic wand to say, well, this is this is what we need. This is what we need. I you know maybe yeah. Ross, maybe you're more insightful than I well, am. Well, I don't Paul, know. I, you know, I think I think you do know. Like, uh, wh when did we ever sit down <clears throat> as a council and talk about? you know what we'd like to see or what we'd like to bring forward uh, we're encouraged to move forward by uh, uh, issuing a, uh, a notice of motion and bringing forward a motion and then we have to try and get <clears throat> four, three other councillors to support us and of course we can't meet four of us together at any time because we're breaking the law yeah. if we do and, and you, you know, know. <laughs> I, I mean in all honesty uh, we have been pretty uh, pretty constrained as a council in terms of input and you know what I can pick up the phone any day uh, and talk to our CAO and he'll say come on down and let's talk about this but I don't I would like to see the the council sitting around the table actually discuss some of the things that are on our mind or the things that we know are on ratepayers minds. more formally than picking up the phone uh, well, I want to discuss it with my fellow councillors, not with with the CAO necessarily. Well, that, that's the problem with the municipal, min, uh, um, the minis, municipal the act. The yeah. Minis, the municipal yeah, act. yeah, it's very so, very like, challenging, yeah, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. I would agree with you 100. percent But you learn to you learn to work with it. I've learned that if I have uh, an idea that I want to be I want to bring forward, I do put it through the notice of motion. Mm -hmm. And if I I feel that I need to sell it a little bit harder, then I'll I'll pick up the phone and I'll talk to the other uh, councillors. So, you know, if if your if your idea isn't good enough to make it to get four out of the seven, then maybe it just isn't the right thing to be brought up at, at council. Is, is this not is this not the SOP the standard operating procedure? For municipal councils across Ontario, yes. you give advance notice of motion. Yep, yep. Two weeks later, you introduce your motion, and you hope that four and you hope that four councillors will. And both Paul and I have brought forward some good motions, and they've been approved. Uh, it, without my motion, you wouldn't be talking about Frog's Hollow Side Road. You know, you'd be talking about Side Road Four. Mm -hmm. I brought in a motion, right. and it was approved to to yeah. retain those. But, but are, are uh, those the real names? important things? Like, yeah, well, and there are important and things. That so, like that's the whole thing. Forward. Like all of a sudden, we start, you know, as a council starts going this way and that way and this way and that way. Does that make good for for good governance? No, I'm, uh, that's why but, I'm saying we need more time to talk amongst ourselves about so what you our priorities are. You want to slow are. things down even slower than oh, what no. government is oh, right no. now. I well, just want to know where we're going. This is what it makes it sound like, Rob. Let me ask both. Let me ask both of you as councillors over the last four years. Did you go to AMO? I went one time. Did you go to AMO? I went to Roma. You went to Roma. Okay. It seems to me as mayor, one of the issues that I'm hearing start to arrive here um, is, that, is that you, in particular, might like more freedom for councillors to get together, but the Municipal Act says you can't do it. Um, as mayor, you'll be off to AMO. I hope both of you will be taking these kinds of concerns to the ministers that you meet at the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. 
But, but if I go I, just a little bit more, Dave, like it just, I don't want to see a mayor that just wants to do what they want to do. There has to be a certain amount of structure in government. You can't have somebody just making up the rules as we go along. There was a guy down south of us that did a lot of that a few years ago, and it didn't do the, uh, didn't work out well there. So I don't want to see that. I, you know, maybe I'm just more of a, uh, you know, kind of a, a rule sort of a person that I can work within the rules. And, uh, and so it, it, I think we're doing fine. You know, uh, we did manage to make the business of Meaford go forward. Whoever becomes mayor, you will be working within the rules. The Municipal Act is really quite constrained. Sure it is, sure it is. but it document. seems like Ross wants to change that. Uh, I don't want to change the rules. Uh, I just want to change the culture. I want to change the culture. Okay. I think we always had a good culture in Meaford. Let, let me ask both of you, as an outsider who travels through Meaford from time to time, when I'm coming down the Bayview Hill and I um, uh, am approaching uh, the town of Meaford through th that apple country, there are, I've been seeing this for several months now, signs for new development on both sides of the highway on what appears to me to be good agricultural land. You're both councillors who were part of the approval process for both of those developments. Ross Kettner, tell me why they are good for Meaford overall. Because they're in the settlement area. That's the answer. They're in the yeah. settlement area yeah. of Meaford, and therefore they're, they're in the urban center. They are. They are actually. The okay. They are, they are classified as agriculture uh, or rural. They're okay. actually in the settlement area. Okay, for for those for those who are passing through and 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 um, and may not know that, and I I don't know how many people in all of the rest of the large and diverse municipality of Meaford understand that, but that's a very simple answer. Yeah. It's, can it's can I add a little bit more to that, Dave? You can. So if, if we don't if we don't keep because you, you got a good point because uh, farmland is being gobbled up by sprawl quite quickly, uh, 319 acres a day is lost every single day of uh, agriculture land is lost to development and to to living on it whether it's highways or or building buildings on it. So you know we talk about density and we talk about intensification. If you don't go in and up. Where does that population go? It goes out wider. And that's where you get into the urban sprawl. And that's the most important thing to remember is that we need a certain amount of density. We, it'd be nice for us all to live in detached and semi-detached houses with big yards in the front and the back. But if we are, what are we going to eat? Are we going to rely on, on, the, uh, on other countries to supply us with food when we could actually produce that food right here in Meaford or in, uh, in Canada and Ontario? Mr. Kettner. Well, I, I, I just think that uh, it's a problem here. Uh, 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 developers don't uh, necessarily initiate uh, this sprawl that you're talking about. <clears throat> a farmer has to get a severance for that to happen. So, well, I, I, and, I the, that, and, we're, and we're seeing a lot of that in Beaford. So, uh, but but you know, for the Who's development, giving, who, the who gives the severances? Well, there's they're strict rules. So, if you're on rural. If there's two types of, there are three types of, of land in the countryside. Special ag, which has very, very limited uh, of, of development ability. Agriculture, and then rural. Rural, you have, it's more lenient, you can have more, uh, more but development. But is it the so. municipality, is it Gray County, is it's it It's under the, the provincial planning. It's the provincial okay. planning statement. Right. But that's why it's important to, to try and condense and to make sure that the, the, the footprint of the urban part of Meaford stays in the footprint. Of, uh, of the urban beef and then all of a sudden we don't start going out into the uh, into the rural areas. I agree. And, and, uh, but how we, are we going to and, do it? And the, well, the, our new official plan uh, puts a real priority on uh, preserving agricultural land and that's I want to put a quick last question to you and we're going to take a break. An editorialist in the Meaford Independent suggested one of the things council needs to do if all of this growth and development is on the horizon that you need to share more of the information with more of the people, not just the neighbors of something that may be coming down the pike. His suggestion is that you need to share all of the information with all of the people, that everybody in Meaford, if there's something going in to the west of Meaford, even the people over at the Meaford St. Vincent town line, whatever it's called these days, they should know about it. And this, is what, I'm, this is what I'm talking about because here's, let, here's let me, the problem, let me, Dave. Let, okay. let me, go, go ahead and let, I'll get a comment from you. Yeah. Let, let, and then we're going to take a break. Yeah, go ahead. Let me tell you the problem. Do you want to take the break and I'll come back, okay? Okay. Let us, let us take this time out then. Okay. Uh, and we'll pick up on this question when we come back uh, about sharing information with, with all of the municipality on developments and, and, and some of these decisions. This is Politically Speaking. It is the Meaford mayoralty debate. Uh, Ross Kettner and Paul Vickers seeking your vote. <laughs> 
for the office of mayor for the next four years. We'll come back and we'll ask them more questions and uh, have them converse with each other on Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. Closed captioning is brought to you in part by Raven Reads. Unbox Indigenous Voices. Subscribe today at ravenreads.org. My uncle Cheney was one of over 150,000 Indigenous children that were taken to residential schools between the 1800s and 1996. My uncle ran away from school, wanting to get home to his mom and dad. And sadly, he didn't make it and died of exposure. When Gord Downey found out about my late uncle Cheney's story, he wrote Secret Path, a series of poems that became an album, then a graphic novel, a documentary, and a concert. Gord met my family, and together we formed the Gord Downey and Cheney Winjack Fund. Together, we are sharing Secret Path and other reconciliation resources with legacy schools, setting up legacy spaces across Canada, and hosting events like Secret Path Week to inspire all Canadians to engage in reconciliation. action. Before he left us, Gord asked us all to do something. You're gonna figure it out. Will you join us? Together, we can make Canada a better place. Hi, I'm Dave Carr, filling in for David Sherman. On the next Politically Speaking, the outgoing mayor of Meaford, Barb Klumpus. She's not running for re-election, but she'll talk to us on Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. Welcome back. You're watching Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. I'm Dave Carr, filling in for David Sherman, who will be back at the end of October. We are into a series of programs over the next few weeks dealing with municipal elections in our area in Owen Sound, Meaford, and Georgian Bluffs. And tonight is the mayoralty candidate debate on Rogers TV uh, for the municipality of Meaford. Ross Kentner and Paul Vickers are our guests here in the studio. And we left off um, with a question that I had uh, based on a comment, uh, an opinion from the Meaford Independent uh, who said one of the things that council needs to do if all this growth and development is on the horizon is tell the entire community about such plans and proposals, not just the neighbors uh, of any specific development. Um, you were excited about this, so I'm, I'm yep. going to let you do this, I'm going to let you respond, and then I'll be coming to you uh, after the, af with another question after this. Okay, so a lot of ratepayers asked for this in the various uh, public meetings uh, on SkyDev, on various uh, proposals, and uh, also uh, many people uh, underline this in the discussions about the official plan. So last week we received the new official plan. There isn't a word in it that I have found to indicate that staff is going to broaden the notice for uh, these applications. Have you voted on the... Um, Not yet. Okay. So uh, my point... Will my, you be voting on this before, before this term is potentially. up? Potentially. Yeah. Okay. So as so council... This is, this is part of my argument that council is not setting the agenda. When, when people ask for something, you would think that uh, with all this work on it that, that you would find that in there. I haven't found it in there. Okay. Uh, so Mr. How, Vickers. So how would, you, how would you propose to do that? Because are we putting another roadblock in to say the developer, you're going to have to spend $10,000 to mail each and every resident of the municipality of Meaford. So just, just try public and... Public uh, notice. Public pub, notice So what, what's your definition of a public... So public notice? And the independent, it, yeah, yes. Then that's fine. I don't want to, I don't want to make this so burdensome no. that every person in the municipality has to receive a piece of paper in the mail. Because I think sometimes people want that. If but I'm, I'm not too sure it's the right way to go. If, so, I'm, if, if I'm not mistaken, a legal notice in uh, the local newspaper is still considered public notice. Lawyers do it, um, um, corporations do it, and that whether people get the paper or not is another issue. Putting it in the paper in this day and age, with all this, with all the social media and everything else, that is still my understanding. That is still the definition of 
or could, uh, they, could they put it on the, could they put it on their website it would certainly no. be on the website uh, under your proposal it would be yes, on your website yes absolutely yeah. sure all right okay all right um, one of you is going to be at Gray County Council for the next uh, four years. I'd like each of you to address your thoughts, um, including possible or potential action by you regarding affordable and attainable housing in your community. I can't think of a lower tier municipality that, that doesn't say we need affordable housing. Some people are changing the word to attainable housing, yep. but I think it's all the same thing. Tell me what you as mayor of Meaford would do. You know, I would certainly advocate... And, and great county councilor. Yeah, I would certainly go to, to county council advocating that, uh, that this is needed. Because let's face it, the only way people are going to come to, uh, to this area and for job opportunities is that there is obtainable housing. So unless you have the housing, quite often the, uh, the employers will never follow. So, you know, you, you work with county council, you make sure the dollars are, are uh, allotted, that are needed. Uh, will we be able to fix everything for everybody all the time? Probably not, but we certainly have to start down this road and start getting uh, getting towards the heart of the problem. And basically, we need more housing. That's the long and the short of it. Mr. Kendner, if you went to Gray County Council as the mayor of Meaford, affordable, attainable housing for your municipality. First of all, I have been at the table at County Council because I was the alternate during the past four years, and our mayor was uh, hospitalized in Toronto for uh, a period of time, uh, and I was at the table, and uh, so I have some experience there. Housing, uh, my first move would be to sit down with the warden and discuss the PILT payment in lieu of taxes. Uh, that we have a, a nest egg there uh, already uh, set aside, both county money and, and the uh, municipality has money, and uh, see how fast we could pull together a plan for affordable housing for Meaford and do that. Yeah, if, I, if I can just say, for the municipality of Meaford to, uh, to have a, their own housing project, it, it's done at the county level. So I want to make sure that we work with the county, that we don't actually get out of our line. Too many times you get two different levels of government that will all of a sudden create friction, that all of a sudden don't work better together, they start working against each other. So I think we do have to watch out for that also. I too have attended many council, county council meetings okay. also. Okay, all right. TC Energy. TC Energy appears to be moving slowly ahead with its proposals for a pumped energy storage plan at the Meaford Range, which I still call it. If you are elected mayor, Paul Vickers, how will this shape part of your four-year four term, or how will you shape it you know that's a, that's a great question because you know Dave really that is the biggest single biggest issue that will affect Meaford if it if it proceeds it still has to go through the environmental assessment and if it is passed and then it starts proceeding through construction phase it is huge and and Dave right now for the last two years since this project has been announced I've been working quietly behind the scenes making suggestions to, to TCE on how to help mitigate some of the issues for the municipality. You know, you can't just get up and say no to it. You know, really council shouldn't take uh, an opinion on it until the environmental assessment is, is, has been done and we can decide whether it's right for our municipality or not. But I think the biggest thing the mayor can do is advocate on behalf of its citizens. Make sure that the, the engineers and the people at TCE understand what it will be like to live through those four years of construction. And I've tried to make some, uh, some simple suggestions on that would make it a little bit more palatable uh, for the municipality. Mr. Kettner. You know, I certainly agree. Uh, we have to be prepared for this to happen uh, because there isn't a lot of evidence that uh, we have any control whatever over it. Um, I've also had conversations with the proponents and um, I'm, I'm satisfied that uh, if it comes to be, uh, that it's our job uh, as, as the mayor and, and council to make it work as effectively and as painlessly as we can. Um, I'm, I'm, I just feel that uh, what we've asked for so far is not sufficient. They tell me that uh, that's just their starting point, but at the end of the day, we need to do some hard bargaining and, uh, and that doesn't just include, you know, uh, financial assistance, but it also includes, in my mind, uh, uh, imp uh, improvements or, or at least uh, safeguards for the environment. Uh, I found, uh, for some reason, uh, I could not get support for my motion that we should be uh, 
updating our both our noise and our air pollution uh, bylaw so that uh, we would be protected if this kind of uh, development occurs. And, uh, I, and there's no doubt in my mind that TC Energy itself would have to uh, provide the wherewithal for the monitoring that would be necessary. Very sophisticated, well beyond the ability of our municipality to provide, but that should be one of the things that they have to provide. But Ross, what have you done for the last two years? You've basically got up before the environmental assessment, before there's been any proof provided that this is an unsafe project, and you just keep saying, no, we don't want this. You have, you have tried have not, not, not you have not worked with TC at all. You've opposed them the whole time, which I don't feel was the right thing to do. I've tried to be, be remain very neutral, yeah. and I've tried to work with them to say, look it, these are the things that are important. I've developed a relationship. Have you developed that relationship, yeah, Ross? Yeah. I, do you I, believe I, so? I had Andrew uh, uh, Mitchell uh, on my deck uh, two weeks ago uh, chatting about, uh, you know, uh, how, uh, how they would, uh, in fact, uh, help the municipality over the, the building period and some of the things they could contribute. Uh, so that I was two you. weeks ago. What about the two years okay. ago? So two, so so two so years ago, I was the only councillor that opposed who, it. who stood up and that said, this it. is so a terrible idea. Without because, any evidence. Because without you, any evidence you know or what, environmental the, assessment. The, the IESO so what do you think is, that has done to your relationship yeah. with TC? Uh, do you think that's harmed it? Do you do, think you've do, bettered your relationship with TC by TCE doing that? TC is always ready to come to the table and have a good relationship with us. But I, don't I, know. I can tell you but, the IECO does not find this beneficial for Ontario Electric consumers at all. Let me ask both of you about the municipality of Meaford in all of this. If this goes ahead, does Meaford currently benefit in the plans uh, when it's completed? Can or will Meaford benefit? Financially, if not, is there something you can do as mayor or as mayor and council? Yeah, I think there is. So the okay. biggest thing is that you got to make sure it's safe. Because if it's not safe, then I will not support it. But if it is safe and, it, and they do decide to go forward with it, then I've started to build those relationships. I've already started talking to them about what the community betterment might be, about what the tax uh, uh, I've had the same discussions I, with them. I, they, they Ross, you have all of us. You, you didn't for two years. All of us. Because they have to, Ross. I've initiated the conversation. I haven't gone kicking and screaming to it. There are a few... A few months ago, I was the one that brought forward a notice of motion to start the uh, negotiation on a, a PILT uh, payment of a tax levy. I was the only one that had the nerve to come, on, uh, come before council and do that because there's so much op vocal opposition. There's maybe not that much opposition to it, but they're very vocal and they're very vicious at times. Let me and tell nobody, you. Had the, nobody had the courage except for myself to do that. Okay. Ross, um, you, you wanted no, no part of it. Well, I can tell you that... Uh, Last word on this, by yeah. the way. Go ahead. It is just so frustrating that uh, I feel that we we need an opportunity to be at the table to, to you know, and I I feel that unfortunately, um, uh, what could happen here is that we will sign off on it. This is what they want. They want us to sign off, and before we really cut a deal on, and that's my big concern at this point in time. I feel like I've been at the table this whole time. Right. Let me ask you, we're going to move on from TC Energy, and uh, I'm presuming you have all candidates meetings coming up, and uh, the, those do. of you uh, who are watching will be uh, asking more of th these same types of questions, and you may form new questions based on things that you hear tonight. One of the things I hear tonight is, is, is one way or another, whether you agree or disagree, both of you have been uh, talking to TC Energy at various levels, um, not necessarily on the public stage, uh, which is where a lot of work has to be done. Uh, that is neither a criticism nor a compliment. It is a fact of life that, that um, things are done at desks rather than on stages. With a population of about 11,000 people in total in the municipality of Meaford, Stats Canada says more than a third of that number is over the age of 60. Stats Canada also says that the number of people who are over the age of 85 is going to increase dramatically, possibly triple in the next few years as people live longer, are treated better by medicine and science. You're not alone in having a population that is aging this way, but what are the issues um, or concerns 
do, does a statistic like that raise for you in the municipality of Meaford? Well, uh, right now, what people are telling me is, where is our retirement home? Uh, in Meaford, we don't have one. We have to go to Markdale or we have to go somewhere else. And uh, it's coming, but it isn't here yet. And that, that's a big concern. Uh, we, uh, that's, that's one of them. I, I think that uh, all of our seniors are uh, concerned about uh, where they're going to downsize to. And in many cases, it's not a million dollar condo. They need uh, accommodation that is going to suit their needs. And so we have a big job to do, as far as I'm concerned, in better preparing our municipality to accommodate the needs of, uh, of an aging population. I'd like to go the different direction, Dave. I'd like to go in the direction of, of encouraging more people to stay in our municipality by somehow getting jobs. And again, the best way to get jobs is to have housing. And when you have housing, the employees will look at your area as a suitable place to, uh, to set up shop. We're never going to have a large Toyota plant or a large manufacturing plant. I'm hoping to see, you know, small cottage type industries come, whether it's actually doing something uh, physical with, uh, you know, building or, or making products or actually having a, a high tech uh, part. And we need those people to start moving to Meaford. It's not always about the older generation and I don't want to forget about the older generation, but we also need the younger generation here. Uh, the, the only thing I have heard from the, the, from the aging population is they're looking for more stacked housing because they don't want stairs anymore. They're having problems keeping in their, uh, in their present uh, location and they wish development would happen a little bit quicker and get some, uh, some vertical uh, 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 housing and apartments and condos. Then they don't have to worry about looking after the lawn and they don't have to worry about the snow. They just can, uh, can uh, easily and uh, enter or exit their, uh, their housing. So get shovels in the ground. Mm, Mr. Vickers, in your opinion, what is the responsibility of your municipal council in the coming four year term to help bring doctors and probably nurses to your municipality? Well, it's a, it's a very important role that the council has to, has to make. And, you know, maybe we need to look at some incentives, some, some small incentives that we can help uh, encourage doctors and uh, people to come to our municipality. We, we've got an area that, uh, that seems to attract people with our, with our trails, our water, our, our beautiful green spaces. Uh, you know, housing is, has always been important. So, you know, those are the, some of the things that we need to do. But council needs to make sure that there's the opportunity for doctors to come to our municipality. Do you have any specific proposals or ideas that you would like to implement if you were mayor of Meaford over the next four years? Yeah, I, I have an idea, and I don't know whether it's uh, palatable or not. But, you know, maybe we could, uh, you know, the doctors where they work on their, on their clinics and their offices, maybe we could give their uh, property tax rebate. Uh, give on them a little bit because you know it's, it's, it's a small incentive it won't cost us a large amount of money but if we could we could attract uh, doctors uh, by doing something as simple as that by giving them a bit of a break on their taxes on their offices then I'd be more more than happy to look into it. Mr. Kentner what is the responsibility of your municipal council in the coming four-year term to help bring doctors and almost certainly nurses probably nurses to this region do you have any specific proposal or proposals that you would lead your council toward? Yeah. Uh, I think that um, the present mayor, who has a wonderful legacy uh, and uh, has certainly been uh, very kind to Paul and I in getting us uh, started, has steadfastly refused to cooperate with neighboring municipalities on this whole issue. Uh, it's been strictly a, a go-it-alone uh, approach, and council has never really ever had an opportunity to discuss the issue. May I make a comment to that? You may. I, I think the mayor, what her uh, her issue was, was that we were putting money into a into a pot, but getting very few returns from it. I'm going to come to this question, and okay. since you've Sorry raised that, that no, that's okay. I'm going to come to this because you raised it anyway. Incentives, some magnificent incentives have been tried over the past 20 to 30 years, and I would say with mixed results in various municipalities. Um, your tax-free proposal sounds like it. Apart from that, would you endorse incentives in any upcoming municipal budget? Maybe to a certain amount. You know, we can't give away uh, everything to uh, to attract people because uh, it just we we don't have enough wealth in our community. So you know, we have a 15.7 million dollar levy. Uh, you know, we have to be careful and we have to make sure we spend that money wisely. So to give 
widespread, open-ended checks to uh, to people to come to this area, I'm not exactly sure whether that's the proper thing to do. Incentives, Mr. Kentner, they've been tried in the past. Would you endorse incentives in any upcoming budget? Uh, you know, we already have uh, a community improvement plan which does provide uh, some excellent incentives. And I think that uh, that is where we should be, you know, sort of, uh, that's, that's where we would look to, for those incentives to come from. Um, and just if I may, I'll just tell you some of those things. Um, uh, uh, incentives for agritourism, on-farm diversification, and value-added agricultural uses. Also, adaptive reuse of buildings, which is particularly important with our heritage buildings and storefronts, and also affordable housing uh, incentives. Now, we just approved this within the last two weeks, I believe, and uh, it's some of those 500 pages of reading that you have to do, but the, I'm these not, are all there. I'm not too sure what that has to do with the doctors and the nurses, but uh, you know, you know, Ross has, has made I some mean, very is good that, points. Uh, is it, are you saying that's where uh, perhaps incentives could come from? From I, that I, fund? I, would, I would say so, but but okay. I, I strongly believe that uh, we've 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 been standing on the sidelines trying to go it alone uh, with doctor rec recruitment, and I think it's very important that we in fact collaborate with our near neighbors and see what we can do on a on a regional basis because it's a regional problem. For those of you who are watching who may not be living in Meaford, if you're living in Owen Sound or you're living in Georgian Bluffs and you're watching this debate tonight, I will be asking this exact same question to the candidates in Owen Sound and the candidates in Georgian Bluffs. Last question, I believe your municipality grew by four and a half percent in the last census period. In that same period, you added 60 new staff to the municipal payroll. It was a 27 percent increase by the figures that I wrote. The question arose, not from me, but from someone else, is Meaford municipal staff bloated and what can Meaford expect from you on this issue in the next four years? Are there services that could be at risk if you want to cut staff from the growth you've had over the last four years? I think so. The, the most serious problem here, Dave, and what we really have to be concerned about is with the development issue. Uh, we have a very small and very, very pressed uh, development department, uh, planning department, and uh, honestly, uh, we, we have to be prepared to spend more on people to ensure that we are able to handle this development and do it well. And I, I brought that up during during the. Uh, consideration of the official plan because uh, if we're going to do the things that are in that plan uh, and and really uh, husband our growth in Meaford uh, it is going to take more staff and we have to be prepared for that. Paul Vickers same question you added 60 new staff to municipal payroll during the period of the last census uh, we have five-year census is Meaford municipal staff bloated and what can Meaford expect from you on this issue over the next four years, would any services be at risk? You know, we, we, have, a, we have a CEO that, uh, that, that we, we constantly ask, you know, do we have the right size of staffing? And he assures us that that staffing is correct. And he actually would like probably to see more staff. Uh, we have a, a bylaw department that is, is far behind. There's, there's always wants and there's needs. And people always want services and also want you to cut staff so it's hard to do both I, I don't have the magic wand Dave I can't all of a sudden create uh, you know less workers and uh, and more services so I think it's something we have to look at as you know with the direction of council if we want a smaller staff then we have to decide what services are we going to cut and uh, you know you can't uh, you can't just I'm, I'm questioning those numbers a little bit I wonder if there isn't some some more uh, information behind those numbers I because it, if the, or the fire department was it added in the in the last four years because I do think I remember something about uh, certain jobs being added that were there before and just had to be accounted in a different way so I, yeah. I don't want to be argumentative but I, I question your number. As someone who lives outside of me for this was a hard one for me to investigate further than the numbers that I had in front of me. Um, Mark how are we doing? Okay we're uh, um, that is all the time I have to ask questions of our two candidates. Um, I said at the beginning, uh, Mr. Kentner got the draw to go first, uh, that he would have the first word, that Mr. Vickers would have the last word. So a closing minute from Mr. Kentner. Thank you, Mr. Carr. 
So uh, I'm just going to give you uh, sort of my top priorities. Uh, an action plan to build attainable and affordable housing, sustainable and innovative economic and agricultural development to create more and better jobs, protecting agricultural land and more investment in rural infrastructure, improving cellular, broadband, internet in both rural and urban Meaford to promote employment, supporting our retail community in Meaford, providing more facilities and services to attract young families, and improving health services and long-term care. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kentner. Mr. Vickers, the last word goes to you. Okay, thanks, Dave. And, and what I want people to know, what, uh, what I will do for them, if, if elected for mayor, I will make sure there will be a transparent and, uh, and uh, transparent council that don't hide behind any doors. And I want to make sure that's, that's uh, clear right from the get-go. I want a very open and transparent council. I want to make sure that we spend your money wisely. I'm a very frugal person. You can just ask my campaign manager about spending money on this election that uh, he can hardly get a dime out of me. And that's the way I come to the council table. Uh, you know, as a, as a farmer, I, uh, I know the value of the dollar. I want to make sure that everybody gets their money spent wisely. If people feel that they're being treated fairly, it's a bit easier to, uh, to write that, uh, that check to the municipality for taxes. Development and TC are the next two important issues that are on the table and will continue to be on the table for the next four years. So if you want strong leadership, take a long, hard look at Paul Vickers on October 24th and please come out and vote. Thank you very much. He doesn't really get the last word I do. Uh, thank you both for being here. I, thank I you. appreciate your time you. to uh, come over to the studio and do this. All candidates meetings are coming up and you're going to have your opportunity to to challenge both of these people. Um, one of them wants, they both want to be your mayor, one of them will be your mayor. Ask them the questions that you need to ask them. We didn't talk about um, the arena and other infrastructure. We didn't talk about the engagement of young people. Um, we didn't talk as much about the official plan as we should have. Those are questions for you to ask. And on October 24th, vote. And then on the evening of October 24th, see your vote counted right here on Rogers TV. Thank you for watching Politically Speaking. David Sherman will be back at the end of October, but I'll be here again next week with another in our municipal election series. You're watching Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Are you the type who would keep going or stop?
It's not easy to stop when you have an addiction. Legalizing cannabis won't stop addiction. It trivializes its consumption. Let's be vigilant. If you need help, visit portage.ca. 